the truth about your diet soda. It tastes like crap because it's made from crap. Genetically modified organism feces, to be specific. I'm talking about the synthetic sweetener aspartame. The patent for it is now online for everyone to see how it's actually made. And it's actually made from the poop of GM bacteria. Here's how it's made specifically. Genetically modified E. coli bacteria are cultivated in tanks. They defecate proteins that contain aspartic acid phenylalanine amino acid segments. That feces is collected and then treated through many chemical processes, including methylation, which adds the toxic alcohol methanol to the mix. Presto, aspartame is made. So if you like that unique chemical taste of aspartame and don't mind eating bacteria feces, it means you are free to consume so many foods and not worry about ingesting any calories, God forbid. Aspartame is in your breath mints, cereal, chewing gum, flavored water, ice creams, coffee syrups, juice drinks, power bars, pudding, ketchup, yogurt, vegetable drinks, candy, and pretty much anything that has the word diet in its name. And that includes, of course, Diet Coke. Interestingly enough, Coca-Cola has just spent a lot of money to produce ads telling you how safe aspartame is. In their ad, they say that the safety of aspartame is supported by more than 200 studies over the last 40 years. As sources, they list the Beverage Institute and the International Food Information Council Foundation. Coca-Cola owns the former, and the U.S. government is a partner for the latter. For further information about the safety of aspartame, you can visit aspartame.org, which is owned by the Calorie Control Council, which is an international association that represents the food and beverage industry. In other words, the safety information about this sweetener poop is controlled by those who profit most from it. Hardly unbiased. Meanwhile, there are hundreds of studies which link aspartame to leukemia, lymphoma, other cancers, liver damage, you name it. So if you're trying to decide whether or not you should ingest aspartame, consider using this as a rule of thumb. If it's literally made from chemically altered GMO crap, it might be crappy for your body. You know it as NutraSweet. It's in just about everything. Soft drinks, iced tea, hot chocolate, tabletop sweetener, chewing gum, cereal, pudding, ice cream, cookies, even breath mints and children's vitamins. Odds are, aspartame is part of your diet. But should it be? It should be withdrawn from the market. Look at this. A summary of nearly 10,000 complaints filed with the Food and Drug Administration since 1980 by people just like Edith Johnson. I was horrified. I was panic-stricken. I was perspiring. I was scared to death on that night. Edith says she'll never forget it. Within a matter of moments, I went completely blind. I could not see anything. Edith was drinking a cup of low-calorie hot chocolate that night. Aspartame made it sweet. And Johnson says aspartame made her sick. All of a sudden, I couldn't see. My eyes went out of focus, and it was like my vision became quite blurred. And you think it's because of aspartame? I think it's very deliberately because of aspartame, yes. It was terrifying. Kate uh, Randall thought she was going crazy. I started popping in my hands and twitching in my feet, my legs, my knees, my upper legs, and shoulders and arms and everywhere. <laughs> Like millions of Americans, Kate Randall was a Diet Coke drinker. A big one. Nine Diet Cokes a day. For how long? Five years. Every day. Every day. Kate developed a twitch in her eye. And then my chin, this part of my neck, and right up by my temples started to twitch. Kate Randall went to several doctors, but their tests were negative. The doctors told me that it was just a glitch in my system. My first reaction was, well, it's a glitch in my system that I'm not willing to live with. And what that meant was that I was going to do my own research. So Kate went online searching for answers. And she says what she found left her with a bitter taste for NutraSweet. I absolutely believe that it was the breakdown of my health for two years.
Kate Randall isn't the only one who believes NutraSweet is dangerous. Dozens of web pages warn against the ill effects of aspartame. One of them is supported by this man, Dr. H.J. Roberts, a private physician and author of several articles and books on aspartame. Somebody has got to put this out and say, be, be careful. Roberts calls aspartame an ignored epidemic. The internist says he's treated patients who suffered severe side effects from America's favorite artificial sweetener. The bottom line is that I have over 1,300 in my own database that people have had terrible reactions to products containing aspartame. Dr. Olney, do you think that aspartame should be on the market today? No. Why not? Because it hasn't been demonstrated to be safe. Dr. John Olney is a researcher at Washington University in St. Louis. I fed aspartame to infant mice and found that it produced the same kind of brain damage that monosodium glutamate causes. Dr. Olney started studying the effects of aspartame in 1970. He says he was alarmed when the rodents developed brain tumors. It indicates that if there's an adverse effect, a serious adverse effect in the animals, and if that adverse effect is absolutely proven in the animal research, then it should not be approved for uh, human use. Dr. Olney took his findings to the Food and Drug Administration as Sarel, the company that developed aspartame, pushed to get the new sweetener to market. The FDA looked at the research and in 1975 put aspartame's approval on hold. It set up an independent panel of doctors to study aspartame. In 1980, that public board of inquiry unanimously ruled aspartame should not go on the market. We had a major uh, responsibility to evaluate. Dr. Vernon Young from MIT is the only surviving member of the board of inquiry. Our conclusion was that on the basis of the evidence presented at that time, we weren't able to assure ourselves of the safety of aspartame in that particular context and that we advised the need for additional studies. They had some concerns about it and felt that there should be additional uh, animal studies done before it, uh, it was approved. Dr. Jerry Goyen was the FDA commissioner then. I looked at that, read it at the time obviously, and said uh, that well, what we had to do next was set up an internal committee of people who had played no part in previous uh, studies of aspartame. But Goyen never had the chance to review the results. That's because he was forced to step down in 1981 when newly elected President Ronald Reagan appointed a new commissioner. That commissioner quickly approved the use of aspartame for dry foods like cookies and pudding mix. Just two years later, he okayed it for carbonated drinks. We tracked down that FDA commissioner, Dr. Arthur Hall Hayes. Hi, Dr. Hayes. Yes. My name is Aline Sergani with Fox 5 in Washington. Yes. Can we ask you a few questions about aspartame? FDA has all the information you need. Yes, but sir, you were the FDA commissioner when aspartame was approved. And I so we'd like that. to ask you a few questions. No, I really have no comments. All the information is available to Food and Drug Administration. Sir, don't you think it's your responsibility as the FDA commissioner when aspartame was approved to answer some of our questions? Not now. I'm no longer commissioner of the FDA. Do you think the public was no, ever I put at risk? Sir, was the public ever Sorry. put at risk? Sir, do you think he put the public at risk, sir? Yes, I do. Senator Howard Metzenbaum has his own yeah. concerns. I can say that I was dissatisfied with the manner in which aspartame was approved. So Senator Metzenbaum requested a review of the FDA's approval process. I have a kind of recollection of it that sort of left a bad taste in my mouth. And it wasn't from aspartame. To understand the senator's concerns, you have to realize what this little blue packet is really worth. Searle sells millions of dollars of aspartame each year. It's used in nearly 6,000 products, including Diet Coke. Searle had a vested interest in keeping aspartame on the market. And the American public had a craving for a calorie-free sweetener. It was a big public issue. It was a matter of considerable publicity and, uh, and, and public attention. 
Between my first and second seizures, I asked my neurologist about aspartame and a possible link to seizures. The Senate's public hearings took place in 1987, but nothing came of Metzenbaum's worries. The committee decided not to request more studies and left aspartame on the market. I think that there were a lot of politics involved and it's being approved. A lot of people share the senator's viewpoint. So Fox 5 obtained these campaign contribution records. They show that Sarrell made contributions to several senators involved in keeping aspartame on the market. Senator Howell Heflin received at least $5,000. Sarrell also contributed at least $3,000 to Senator Orrin Hatch. Senator Robert Byrd got $1,000. And Representative Henry Waxman also received a $1,000 contribution. And that's not all. We also learned that several federal officials were investigated for possible ties to Sarah. I think the chairman of the FDA <clears throat> wound up in having some sort of economic relationship beneficial to himself uh, with Searle Manufacturing, uh, who at that time owned the, the rights to aspartame. The issue is really not an issue of science, it's an issue of politics. The Monsanto webpage links sites belonging to the American Diabetes Association and the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Both organizations have published articles supporting NutraSweet. Monsanto does not mention its large contributions to both nonprofit groups. Not enough is known about NutraSweet. Edith Johnson just wants the FDA to order more studies. So do the hundreds of people who continue to file complaints. So many. The Department of Health and Human Services has identified 91 symptoms by complainants attributed to aspartame use. The number one reported symptom is headaches. Some of the other most reported symptoms are dizziness, mood changes, nausea, and stomach pain. Absolutely, I think the FDA should revisit this issue. But for now, the FDA has no plans to revisit the issue. The agency wouldn't even designate someone to speak with us on camera. But FDA officials did recently speak with members of the Aspartame Consumer Safety Network. James Turner and Mary Stoddard say they've been trying for years to convince the FDA that aspartame should be taken off the market. But their most recent attempt failed. They barely acknowledge the possibility that some people may be harmed. Their, their basic position is that in everything they've looked at, all the data has come in and there's nothing, zero, that suggests to them that there's any problem. The Food and Drug Administration maintains aspartame is safe, but that's no comfort for Edith Johnson. You are talking with a very angry lady. I am furious today. They had no right to market it. My message to people is drink water. You don't need aspartame in your life. It's everywhere. Try walking down one aisle in the grocery store without finding aspartame in something. Is it safe? Should it have ever been approved? That all depends on who you ask. What would you like to tell people about aspartame? Um, avoid it. FDA representatives would not speak to us on camera, but they did send us this statement. In it, the agency stands behind its decision. The statement then goes on to say the FDA remains ready to act if it receives what it considers to be credible scientific evidence. But until then, NutraSweet will remain on the shelves of your grocery store. Reporting live, Aline Sergani. Now back to you, Tracy. Well, very interesting report there, Aline. Thank you.